Jesus is Lord, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He loves you. From our beautiful West Texas city, Life Christian Television presents Good News from El Paso. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's God Almighty. He came into the world in flesh, lived among us, died for our sins. He rose again. He went to heaven. And he told us, he said, occupy till I come. I am coming back to meet a church that I have perfected. This is the good news that we are bringing to you. So let not your heart be troubled. Be strong in the Lord and by the power of his might. Get someone to watch this program and God is going to bless you as he always has. Honey, please, can you welcome our audience? Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. You have made the right choice. So invite others to watch. And guess what? Get some pen, get a pen and a paper and write down some information. Because the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Remember to get your family watching, okay? Thank you for joining us. We sure do appreciate you. Hallelujah. Before we go, as usual, we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God of glory, our God and the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day. We thank you that your anointing is on what we are going to discuss with our brothers and sisters. And we are all going to apply this in our lives and be as you want us to be, like you, your very image and likeness. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit on this topic today. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, our topic today is this. What is the difference between God's compassion and human compassion? So, divine compassion versus human compassion. We are going to see some scriptures. First, the first scripture we are going to read now is from Exodus chapter 3. Verses 7 to 10. Honey, please, can you read for us Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 10. Exodus 7 to 10. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry by reason of their tax masters, for I know their sorrows. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a, la a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Hallelujah. God said, I saw my children in Israel that, in Egypt that are crying, and I have compassion for them. I'm going to do something about it. Let us look again at the book of Matthew, chapter 14. Verses 14 to 16, what does he say? Matthew 14, 14 to 16. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed them all, healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a, de a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give them food to eat. You see here, the way Jesus showed compassion, first to those who were sick, he healed them. And then the next were those who were hungry, he fed them. So, how do we human beings show compassion? Say, for example, someone is you're feeling sorry for someone in need, or someone has lost some a very good person to the, him or her. You say, oh, sorry, we're very sorry for what has happened. We hope God will help you, God will bless you. That's the way we feel compassion. That's the way we show our compassion. Someone is sick, you meet them, oh, uh, sorry for this illness. We hope God will help you, God will heal you. And we do nothing about it. We just say how we feel towards that person. That is human compassion. Now, is that the way God showed compassion? How do we show compassion as human beings, as God's children, God's image and likeness? Honey? Well, number one thing is this. Humans, as humans, especially those that are not Christians, true Christians, when you see somebody hurting, somebody in need, 
let's say, homeless people out there, a lot of times you feel sorry for them and you move on. You do nothing. But we, the Christians, we need to stop and then give whatever help we have. So God, Jesus, how did Jesus himself show compassion? We have read from this Bible. The, when you look at uh, Matthew 10, verse 38, it tells us that God anointed Jesus Christ with power, with the Holy Spirit, and he went about doing good, healing those that were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. God is with us. So when we see a need, we go ahead and meet it. Okay, so you have uh, a man, Jesus in the Bible. Lord, that's why I love this wonderful Lord Jesus. And his examples, we follow. We follow his examples. Okay? The lame, he heals them. The, the leper, he heals them. Whatever problem you have, nothing, is, nothing was too big nor too small for Jesus. And here where we are today, the same thing. Nothing, no problem should be too big or too... You go, but I need something myself. I need healing. You have it. You already have it inside you. You just have to open your mouth and speak it. And if you need to reach out for a brethren, call somebody and say, join me in prayer. Or agree with me in prayer. But do something. Never be... Uh, Idle, never be cold. Don't go, well, that's their problem. Oh, if I give them money now, they will use it to go and buy drugs or whatever. Just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we compare these things as, you know, you look at the way humans do it, regular humans that don't know Jesus. They don't do. They just talk. And you cannot tell a a homeless person that needs food or shelter, if you, if you have the ability to help them, you cannot tell them, oh, go away, God is helping you. When you can help, God wants us to do something. So as Jesus went about doing good, healing those that were oppressed by the devil, casting out devils, making people's life better, that's what we need to do. And you do that by making your own life better first. With your mouth, you declare a thing. This, from before you go to bed to before you get up from your bed, you speak, you declare something, you praise the Lord, you worship him, you love on the Lord, and he showers you with his glory and his <coughs> presence. So that's what we do as Christ will do it. Again, let us see what did the Bible actually tell us what to do. Let us look again at the book of James, chapter 2, uh, verses 15 to 16. Honey, let us read that and see if it backs up what we are saying. James, chapter 2, uh, verses 15 to 16. What does it say? Amen. 15 to 16. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed, and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things. You don't give them those things that they need, which are needful to their body. What does it profit you? Did you hear that? So don't tell the person, oh, you're fine. Uh, God will help you. Yes, God will help them through you. That is why he said we are representing here, here on earth. We are here in this world to apply, to enforce what Christ died for. Say, for example, the centurion came to Jesus Christ. This centurion servant was so dear to him. You can find that in Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to uh, 8. This, the servant was so dear to him, and he came to Jesus. He said, this servant is so dear to me. He had compassion for that servant, but he could do nothing. So what did he do? He sought the help of Jesus Christ because he knew that Jesus would not only show compassion, but he would do something, and he did it. Look at the three Hebrew men in the, uh, in the fire, Meshach, Shadak, and Abednego. God did not say, well, this, my children here, I feel sorry for them. They're going to be thrown into the, into the uh, body funeral, uh, body uh, furnace. I'm sorry for them. I'm going to, well, they will die, I come to heaven. No. 
He delivered them from that fire. That was how God showed compassion. He did something about their problem. He did something about the question they had. He answered it. He solved it. That's how God shows compassion. Now, look at the, uh, Daniel in the lion's den. God did not say, yes, Daniel, you have been a good man. You have worshipped me. You have been fasting and praying. Don't worry. I'm bringing you to heaven. No. God showed compassion. And what did he do? He delivered him. So my brothers and my sisters, let us act like God. Let us show compassion like God shows compassion. Sometimes we cannot do it. So you need to give somebody something, but you don't have it. And when you really want to do that thing, but you cannot do it because you don't have it. So what do you do in order to help somebody? You make sure you have that to yourself and then be able to do it. So if we don't know how to develop what God has given us, the gift, God has, the gift that God has entrusted into us, God has given you the power to heal. But if you don't develop that ability to heal, when you see a, a sick person, you will only show human compassion. But if you have developed that healing ability, you will meet that person. And like Peter, the beautiful girl, you say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Because you, have, you now you have something to give. You remember what Peter said, I don't have the money to give you. I don't have the gold to give you. But what I have, I give to you. And what did he have? The ability to make that man to walk. So first of all, as a Christian, go and develop the potentials God has put into you. Develop them. And then you'll be able to administer those things to others. That is how we live as Christians. So let us see how we should act. But what other thing, how again we should apply or show the sympathy to people? Mm -hmm. Honey? Yep. The, the way you show it. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. how do we show this sympathy? Yes, honey, I need to continue on this one. Yes. You see, the man had a beautiful girl that we said earlier. Peter has been passing there, maybe all the time he has been showing sympathy. Oh, what a, a, what a, a poor man. Oh, we wish he could walk. I wish we'd give him some money. But on this day, he showed godly comp compassion. He showed godly compassion. He commanded the man to rise, and the man rose. And when the man rose and walked, what happened? They say 5,000 people turned to Jesus on that day. If you show a, a human compassion, only that person will feel it, or people around you. But when you show a godly compassion, it will touch the life of hundreds of people. It will touch the lives of thousands of people when you are able to show godly compassion. Okay? Dorcas, when he was doing good things to, to the ladies around him, show, showing them clothes and giving them gifts, but she died. And what compassion did they show to Dorcas? They started crying. Oh, Dorcas is dead. They feeling sympathy for themselves and for her. Then they told Peter. Peter came in there. Peter said, forget about your compassion. He went there. Kneeled, prayed, and said, now you rise up. That is godly compassion. That's the kind of compassion God wants us to, sh to, to show. Mm? We talk about, uh, look at uh, Paul when he was preaching. And people were there sitting, there sitting watching him preaching. And then there was this man, lame, who couldn't walk. And what did Paul did? Paul showed compassion. Paul looked at him and said, yeah, this man has listened enough. The word of God is him, and I believe he now has faith. He said, now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. He showed compassion. If you had just preached to the man that, hey, God heals, God will help you, God will encourage you, nothing would have happened. But because of that compassion he showed, lives, people's lives were touched. And people knew that, yes, this God, this man is preaching. He's really the God of power, the God of, the, the God of mercy, the God, the God who can do it all. How, how again did the apostle show compassion? Look at Paul. When he was a prisoner and going to Rome, they had that shipwreck. He came to that island. The people showed him compassion the way they could. could they, 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 in fact, they showed him a godly compassion. They put fire for them to warm themselves up. They gave them food. But then this man's father was sick. Paul did not go, so, oh, you have shown us compassion. We really feel sorry for you. Don't worry, God will heal you. No. He prayed and got the man healed. That was compassion. That is how we show compassion in this way we are today. If we are Christians, called by the name, of the, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are expecting him to come. He said he's coming for the perfect church. 
He's coming for a church that is able to do what he has committed in their hands. Let us begin to show the God kind of compassion. Right, honey? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you have the faith. You have the faith in the Son of God. You have the name of Jesus, the Son of God. You have the blood of Jesus. Do you believe in him? Do you believe all he went through, all he accomplished, all he brought us into, the life we have in Christ? Then you start walking. All you need to do is, you see the sick, can I pray for you? You lay hands on the sick. Your job is to lay hands and say, in Jesus' name, be free from your sickness and disease. And you mean it from your heart. Let God be the one that will do the miracle. You're not the miracle worker. God is the miracle worker. You are the assistant with your hands, right? That's all. Just bold spirit. We have prayed about that several times here for you. So now begin to talk to God about your spirit of boldness. You can do it. And that's what we need to do. So a lot of times you go, well, I don't know whether they will not, they will not like it or not. Who would not like to be healed? Who would not like to be blessed? A lot of people want to be healed and blessed. So you just said, can I pray for you? Or you see them and say, can I talk to you a minute? God loves you and I love you too. You look so wonderful. Right there, you've made their day. You are doing something. So you look at, let's, before we even continue, let's look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John, where at the back? Chapter 3, verse 8. What did he say? He says, he that, commit, he that committed sin, anyone that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. See, Jesus Christ came to destroy it, and he did. And he gave us the power, the authority, the dominion. You have it all. So now you go and destroy the works of the devil. In your boldness. See, we, there was a bracelet that, or the word that used to be around before. I haven't seen it for a while now. WWJD. What would Jesus do? We know what Jesus would do. He was never shy on, in doing good. He was always there helping and doing the will. Now, the question is, what will I do? What will you do? So we go about and doing what he did. Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. In your closet, you can look around. There are things that you can clean up and give away. Do that. You say, where do I give it? Well, there are homeless people around. Or you go to downtown. Or you go to shelters and drop good stuff to them. You feed the hungry. So that's what you do also. So in your, in your pantry, you can locate some things that, that you don't need or whatever, or even buy some more stuff and then give out there. So that's what you can do. People have problems in their marriages. You can intervene. You can bring the good news. You can encourage them and let them know your wife or your husband is not the problem. The devil is the problem. And before you know it, you join them back together. That's what you can do. See? So you are showing God's compassion whenever you, 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 are, you, you give a solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. Whenever you cause somebody to, who is, who's, who's downcast to become excited, to become cheerful, whenever you encourage one another, whenever you encourage somebody that is down or sick or even, there are a lot of people that are lonely out there. Do you know that? You have some homeless, I mean, not homeless, you know, like elderly people around. So, I mean, you can keep them company. Maybe one hour, whatever, you can come up with. You just spend that few minutes or one hour with them. They, you make their day. You make their lives better. That's godly compassion. So, you go about doing what you know to do. And God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, help your church to live they have the heart to do this things. But for some reason, the fear, the worries or whatever, the cares of their own problems overshadow. Now we say, Lord, by the authority you have given us, 
to rule and reign in this world, we cast out that spirit of darkness from their minds, from their lives, from their hearts. The spirit of discouragement and fear. Out in Jesus' name. Out right now. And we say, Lord, help them. Let them have plenty to give to do the good works that they need to do. All of us Christians, because we want to do your will, O oh Lord. This is our heart desire. In Jesus' name, we thank you that it is so. It is so. Amen. If you agree, you say amen. 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 Yes. Like my wife said, it's not you doing it. You see, somebody discovered the plane that is flying all over the world today. How to make the plane or the car. He's the one who found it. Every other person after that is a tech. You are just applying what someone has discovered. You all, Jesus said, I will do the healing. Just you lay your hand on that person. But you have, before somebody becomes a tech, that person will have to be trained. So in the kingdom of God, using the language of man, be a tech. Train yourself. Develop your faith. Have faith in the word of God. And before you can have the faith in the word of God, you have to know the word of God. That's why I say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you know this word of God, then you can have absolute confidence that the word of God works. Because it, said that it, because it says that the word of God is a living thing. It is not dead. It's not just something on paper. As soon as the word of God gets into your mouth, the life of God gets into it and it becomes very effective, very powerful and operative. So it is our responsibility to understand this thing. And show compassion the way God shows compassion. Show that love. He said, it didn't say for God so loved the world that he was in heaven looking at the world and loving the world. Say no. John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world that he did something. What did he do? He gave his only begotten son to come and die for the world he loved. He did something about it. You see, Jesus was invited to a wedding. The people, they ran out of wine. His mother told him, Son, these people don't have any wine. He didn't say, oh, poor man, I'm sorry, I wish you had enough money to buy wine. No, he did something about it. He solved that problem. So we cannot be wearing those hand, uh, bangles that say, what would Jesus do? And do nothing ourselves. So remove that J there and say, what will I do? W-W-I-D, what will I do? Let that be. Challenge yourself. But remember, you don't go out to do something you don't know how to do. Train yourself in prayer. Train yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit. He said the Holy Spirit is here to teach us. What is he teaching us? The Holy Spirit is here, is here to teach us how to heal the sick. He's to teach us how to give food to the hungry by knowing how to appropriate that food and then show, give it to the people. The people, when they were leaving Egypt and going to the promised land, they were hungry. They needed food. Moses knew where to go get that food. They didn't know. Moses had to ask, okay, dad, they need food. What do we do? Then God told him what to do. Dad, they need water. What do we do? God told him, you should know where to get what the people need and then give it to them. That's, that's what we are. That's what we are all here to, to do. We are divine technicians. So do what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen. And we keep encouraging you to read the Bible, pray, because when you do those things, the Holy Spirit will drop things in your spirit. Like this morning when I was just uh, uh, reading and all that, meditating. So you, the Holy Spirit dropped into my spirit. I am of Zion. I am of Zion. Zion, where Jesus Christ is enthroned. So when you are of Christ, sickness and disease will flee from you. When you keep saying, I'm of Zion, in Zion, we don't say we are sick. In Zion, we don't lack any good thing. In Zion, it is important that you focus, read the Bible. Because when you do, you have greater knowledge and revelation knowledge there is. So that you can be bold when you stand and speak. The devil will not question you and say, ah, Peter, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Now you tell the devil, out. In Jesus' name, I belong to the Lord. You continue your... So know who you are by knowing what God says. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, I'm going to pray for you. We are going to pray for you now. We are going to pray the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is the prayer that believes that whatever you ask the Father in my name, you will have it. 
So we are going to pray, believing that we have it. So when we pray, don't say, well, let's see what's going to happen. No. When I pray, I don't wait to see what is going to happen. When I pray, I know what is going to happen. I'm following a principle that whatever I ask the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, I have it. So if you are sick right now, I'm going to pray for you. And you are going to be healed. I don't have to touch you. He said he sent his word and healed them. Amen. I'm sending God's word to you now to heal you. So as a point of contact, touch yourself. I'm praying for you now. Whatever disease it is, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm coming against it. Remember, every sickness is from the devil and it's temporal. Anything the devil puts on you does not last forever. Only what God puts on you will last forever. Whether it's cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart problem, right now I'm taking them out by the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. For the authority you have given us to heal the sick with your word, to deliver those in bondage by your word, to bring relief to those who are desperate by your word, I command the power of God to be made manifest in the life of this person watching now. That the healing power of God flows through that person right now. Whatever this disease or sickness the devil has put in that person, I command it to go. If it is cancer, I command those cancer cells to die. If it is high blood pressure, I command the pressure to her to be right and the pressure to be right. If it is diabetes, I command the pancreas to, to bring out insulin for, diver, for, 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 to digest the food and make the body work right. They are now, as I have decreed it, according to the authority and permission given us, given me, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that it is so done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, repeat from your heart. Say, Jesus, thank you for, being, for coming for me. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you suffered and died. I ask you to forgive me my sins. Be the Lord of my life. Be my savior and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for I believe I have received my salvation and I believe I received my eternal life. And if you have made this prayer, now begin to thank the Lord and praise him for you have come into the kingdom of God for such a time as this. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. Go ahead. And he loves you. And play a part as a, a divine tech. Do what God has asked you to do. God loves you and we love you. Amen. Remain blessed. See you next time. God bless you. Jesus is Lord, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he loves you.